So we um, talked about the algebraic properties of the OLS so far. And now let's add some um, probabilistic um, statement. So um, <coughs> let me write down the equation, regression equation again. So we talked about how we can interpret A and B given data. So given data, we can calculate A and B through least square method. We can also calculate EI uh, from this equation. But as before, let's uh, distinguish between ex ante view and ex post view and also the population idea. Um, this uh, discussion corresponds to what we discussed under the third subject when we talked about the statistics uh, from the ex ante perspective. So we talked about three related concepts. So in population, we have population parameter. Population parameter. In the sample, we can calculate sample statistics. And sample statistics can be viewed in the ex ante sense. In that sense, we call them estimates. And when we consider sample uh, statistics from the ex ante perspective, we call them estimator. So now let's, let's relate this A, B, and E uh, to this distinction. So first we can think about the population parameter that corresponds to A and B that shows the true relationship between X and Y. And let's call them alpha and beta. So these are population parameters that we are really interested in. So if we believe that Y is really alpha plus beta X plus some epsilon, then the beta shows the true relationship between um, the individual height and the model's height. But that's population parameter, and we don't see. So instead, we can calculate A and B from our sample. So we will consider A and B as the estimates of alpha and beta that we cannot see. And continuing the uh, convention that we used earlier, instead of AB, let's call them A hat, uh, beta hat, to emphasize that these are the estimates of the parameter. So we may change this as alpha hat, beta hat. Epsilon hat. <coughs> and also we can consider alpha and beta from ex ante perspective, then alpha hat and beta hat from the ex ante perspective, they are estimator. So they are random variables, they have um, mean and variance each has mean and variance. And here, alpha hat, since alpha hat is an estimate of alpha, the mean of alpha hat, if you write down here, 
true mean of alpha hat, what would be the relationship between these two? Alpha and true mean of alpha hat. Um, if alpha hat is a good estimate of alpha, then of course they should be same. If they are different, then alpha hat is not a good estimate of alpha. So uh, while there is no requirement, it's not a requirement that they should be identical. They should be identical, but if alpha hat is good one, then of course they should be at least close enough. Also, variance of alpha hat uh, belongs here. And again, as we did before, you can think of, we can think of the estimates of the variance of alpha hat here and also variance estimates of alpha hat is, can be also viewed as random variable. And um, we have formula for this, but I will not write down. I mean, that's not the main point here. But I just want you to have the concept of what they are. And as before, we can think about the standard deviation of this quantity. And as before, we call them, this one is called standard error. So this um, is something like standard deviation of alpha hat. So before what we had was we had um, the sample mean here and we had population mean and the true mean of sample mean and the standard deviation of sample mean and we have sample standard deviation of sample mean, which we call standard error. So if we are just replacing sample mean with alpha hat, that's exactly the same story. So what does standard error tells, uh, tell us? Standard error tell us whether alpha hat is very far away from the mean of alpha hat, which is mo most likely the same thing as alpha. So you need to understand the standard error idea here. And also uh, another a bit more challenging idea is we wrote down um, things like before we said that this is always satisfied. Once we have data, uh, sample, you do the OLS and calculate the residual, this is always satisfied. But E, of course, is different from epsilon because E is um, what you calculate in this side. Epsilon is something that uh, lives in population. So while we always have this thing, this doesn't really correspond to the true value of so this is the population concept um, and if we write something like this here then we will be able to calculate something like xi ei Unfortunately, um, this one is not a good um, estimate of this one because this has always value of zero. So this doesn't tell us what the true value of this is and that's the difficult part with the OLS. That is, um, as I said before, that as long as you have any sample with two variables, you can do OLS. You can calculate A and B and calculate the residual. 
there is absolutely no problem in terms of algebra. But um, whether these numbers are good estimates of the true population number, uh, that's a different issue because the um, If you learn econometrics, you will learn when these numbers are good estimates of these numbers. And one requirement is that they should be zero. And since we don't have easy way to tell whether this is really close to zero, it's difficult to tell because uh, this one is not a good estimate of this. So just looking at this number wouldn't say anything about whether this is likely to be zero. So you have to be very careful when you do the OLS because the, there is some requirement when these are good estimates of true population parameters, but it's not easy to tell whether that requirement is satisfied. So you may end up saying completely nonsense when you apply this perspective. So you need to make distinction. When you take OLS as data summary exercise, there is no problem. You can always present OLS result as summarizing your scatter plot. If you want to do this, meaning if you want to interpret these numbers as estimates of this population number, you have to be very careful because this works sometimes, this doesn't work in many cases, and we don't have easy way to tell whether this should work or not. So for example, if x is, uh, again, the, um, what would be good? So x is the weight of individual instead of height of mother. And y is still um, height of individual. Um, maybe, OK, so maybe there's some relationship between weight and height. A better example would be, say, x is um, the color of eyes some index indicator of color of i and y is the, the height, then of course there will be no relationship between x and y, but you can still do the OLS and you can find out a and b and you can find out residual, you can report all this number, but that doesn't make sense because the, this part will not be zero in that case. And we don't know whether this will be zero or not in general, but in application, you just have to think about whether this number is likely to be zero or not. And if this is not zero, then alpha hat is a bad estimator of this number. Beta hat is a bad estimator of this number. And in fact, there is no, you cannot even write down this equation because this equation doesn't make sense. So that's something you have to be careful. But anyway, so the Computer software wouldn't tell you. Computer software wouldn't put some uh, warning in red character, so you shouldn't do this OLS. So this is your responsibility uh, before you get into this type of interpretation. So data summary exercise is always OK, but this as, uh, interpretation is not always OK. You have to think about whether this interpretation makes sense or not. Assuming this interpretation makes sense, let's get back to this thing a bit further. So here, this indicates something like standard deviation of alpha hat. And alpha is the true number. So given that, So you have alpha, this is population and we have alpha hat, that is our estimate or estimator. And we have square root of variance. And this standard error is something like standard deviation of alpha hat. So we will draw, think about 
the distribution of alpha hat, again, taking the x ante perspective. Alpha hat is random variable when you look at it as estimator. So this is alpha hat. And draw the distribution. Ex ante, if alpha hat is a good estimator, then its mean should be more or less uh, alpha, if it's a good estimator. And we have some uh, idea of how to think of the standard deviation of variance of this distribution in ex ante sense. Now let's switch to ex post situation. Um, once we switch to ex post situation, we actually have the value of alpha hat. So we will um, write down Okay, I'll just continue to make this distinction. So it's alpha here, distribution of alpha hat when you work in ex ante. Now, ex post, we have alpha hat and we have standard error. So if you indicate alpha hat, and we can think about some distribution of this distribution, and you can take the standard error um, as indicating the standard deviation of this distribution. Now, given some alpha hat, um, and this one, of course, you don't know what alpha is. We can think about where this distribution is. So this is what you think the distribution of alpha hat is. And you have one alpha hat exposed. So what you do is you are asking the following question. You start from a specific value of alpha and ask, is this alpha hat likely to be from this distribution? And you repeat this uh, analysis a few times. More specifically, uh, one thing you could do is say if alpha is 0, then the distribution of alpha hat will be centered around 0. So this is if. We don't know, of course. And then we continue this discussion here. If alpha hat is 0, if our true value of alpha is 0, then we will have a distribution of alpha hat centered around 0. And is this particular alpha hat likely to be from this distribution? That's the question. So for example, if alpha hat is say 0 0.61, <coughs> then what you are asking is, you are asking, is this number likely to be from this distribution? And we can check whether this number is likely to be from this distribution if you know the standard error of this distribution. Standard error is an estimate of the variance, standard deviation of this distribution. So ex post, we have good sense of uh, the standard deviation of this distribution. So what we continue to say here is, uh, if alpha is 0 and standard deviation standard error 
is close to the true standard error of alpha hat, then since we know the value of standard error, we can actually draw a very specific distribution with using this number as the standard deviation. Then we can ask, putting in 0 0.61 here, we can ask whether this number is close to the mean in terms of the standard deviation of this distribution. Or more specifically, we can uh, find out the range where this area is 2.5%. And what we can do is, if alpha hat is within this interval, then we will say that that's, it's quite possible that alpha is indeed 0. If 0 0.61 is in this range, we can say it's very unlikely that 0 0.61 is from this particular distribution. And that's how hypothesis testing works. So you start with a particular value of alpha, whatever number you are interested in, and you use the standard error as the uh, standard deviation of the distribution of alpha hat. And then you check whether your alpha hat is in this 95% confidence interval or not. If it's in this 95% confidence interval, then you say this is highly likely. If this alpha hat is not in the 95% confidence interval, then you will say this is unlikely. And to summarize this thing, in after ordinary least square, what you will see is you will first see alpha hat in the regression output. You will also see standard error in the regression output, which you can interpret more or less as standard deviation of the distribution of alpha hat. And you will also see alpha hat over standard error, which is sometimes called t-statistic. And this indicates whether this distance is large or small relative to the standard error. And what we can also say here is that this 95% confidence interval can be constructed from as can be viewed as two standard deviation away interval centered around mean. So if this number is greater than two, that means alpha hat is outside this confidence interval. If this value, absolute value of t-stat is less than two, we know that alpha hat is within this standard, uh, within this confidence interval. So that's what you have. Also, uh, the regression output reports the probability that uh, alpha hat, um, probability that this number from um, the draw random draw from the distribution of alpha hat um, is greater than um, alpha hat or, um, yes, I think that's enough. This times two is called p-value. So what it does is, given some alpha hat, we can calculate this probability and that's and multiply by two so that it's symmetric, then that is called p-value. And that's also reported in the regression output. And finally, the regression output, for example, in Stater, they also report the confidence interval, which is alpha hat minus more or less two times standard error, comma, alpha hat plus 
uh, two times standard error. So that's where we believe the true alpha lies um, starting from alpha hat. So you um, need to understand these one, two, three, four, five quantities from the regression output um, in this class. Sorry, so it's random, 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 ran random draw from the distribution of alpha hat. What I mean is, this is the distribution of alpha hat. We want to pick one number randomly from this distribution. When you do that, what's the probability that that number will be greater than alpha hat? Um, now, if this is less than half, this is the correct formula. If this is greater than half, then you have to, um, if it's alpha hat is somewhere here, then you, it has to be the other way. It's, uh, or, Um, that's only if this number is less than uh, half. Otherwise, you have to calculate the other way. Well, I'll not write down the formula just to, as long as you understand what it is. Okay, any question on this? Okay, I'll stop here.